I just realized this week that the first week of August has tons of things for me to celebrate. It's got your mom's birthday. Yeah, that's the very beginning. And the fourth, actually, so that's the first. Yeah. The fourth, actually, because I went and did the math, the fourth made ten years since I put a deposit down on the building for, I the, saw for that. a Grove Gamers Guild ten years ago. I saw that on At Facebook. My anniversary ain't until the 10th of September, but I put the deposit down on the building August 4th, 2010. And then, of course, today is your mom's and I anniversary of our first walk together. Mm. So, three days in the first week. There you go. That's actually pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. That's a lot better anecdote than getting to block a 6'6 six, six with an 80-80. So, <laughs> whoop de diddle do. <laughs> so, anyway, welcome back again to another episode of Reblog at All, where we regurgitate what we feel are the best and neatest things from Mark Rosewater's Tumblr account called Blog at All. And uh, we are on episode number 22. 22. 20 deuce. That's right. Um, the double deuce. The double deuce. <laughs> and we're going to see if we can do it 22 minutes. Is that the deal? Uh, sure. Let's hit it. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So uh, and we move forward from last week and we go over the stuff. So if you have more interest, follow along at home. Go, go get you a Tumblr account and follow it along. Is black now secondary in oubliette style effects? If you remember last week, we were talking about oubliette. Right. Uh, with phasing, replacing exile, and oblivion ring effects. Or is this a one time thing? Right. <laughs> a reprint of oubliette, a card from 26 Six years, years ago, <laughs> is not a precedent for anything. Right. Oh, I'm going to back up just a minute because reading that made me remember another thing I found out today. Yeah. That generally, Alpha Magic is considered to have released on August 5th. Oh! 20, 1993, 93, 27 seven years, years ago. ago. Nice! So, that's that's the date that's seen the most in relation to it would being that, released. So yesterday guess, would have been 27 years. I'm going to guess that was Gen Con 93, because that's where I've heard it first. And that That's the date that I saw that, that Magic itself, right. Watsy, put out. So, anyway, backing up a little bit, so... Is there a possibility for cycling to become deciduous? It's such a good mechanic that helps a lot with flooding slash mana screw. See, now I thought it already was. Right. But I think it's whatever the next category is, according to Mara. <laughs> it's one of the mechanics we use most often outside of evergreen and deciduous. That's fair. And uh, he says that on the storm scale, it's a three. So... It's whatever past evergreen I mean, deciduous. I think. I think. It's I, not, I, don't, I don't know what we would call that. I, don't, I think uh, it's not deciduous. Leafy I, vegetable. <laughs> shrubbery. I don't. It's know. a. It's a shrubbery. shrubbery. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with shrubbery. So anyway, moving along. Or did you have something? Uh, I was just. I think uh, it's not deciduous because whenever we see it, we see it as a whole set mechanic, not just sprinkled here and there. It's a focus whenever we see it. Every X number of years, it gets a set that it's a focus in. Right, because it's it's meant to help smooth out the draws right. and make it, it it enables shenanigans. Right. Yeah, it enables <laughs> graveyard stuff right. and so forth. So yeah, uh, Mark was Cold Snap designed to be played with Ice Age slash alliances? How well did it go since those sets were designed so far apart? It was designed mostly to be drafted by itself, right. but it does match mechanical themes with Ice Age and alliances. It, it is very weird to see that as a block in the old sense. Right. When Cold Snap was made just... 15 years later or something? Uh, a long time <laughs> later, yeah. I, I don't think it was 15 years. It's a decade plus, but you know. Uh, why were cards that clearly represent specific individuals, but were printed before Legends, like Aladdin or Ali from Cairo, not errated to be legendary? Well, this is something we run into and yeah. maybe mention it once in a while. We've but answered this before. I because think. it changes how the cards work. If we ever strip the drawback from legendary, we'd consider it. So legendary has a rules meaning. Right. So, and until we remove that rules meaning, we get rid of it, it's actually a drawback. Because you can't have two Alley of Kairos on the field at the same time. Right. Uh, by one player. Uh, with how the legendary rare rule works now, as opposed to how it worked 25 years, years ago, ago and 20 
two, two years, years ago, ago. <laughs> eighteen years ago. It's it changed about half a dozen times. It's changed several times. Go look that up. We may have talked about it before, but it's it's been it's been in places. Um, we know your stance on hybrid mana and color identity and commander, but what about devoid? Devoid creatures still have colored identities, but if you had the power, would you make them colorless identity? Why or why not? And uh, Mayro says they should have a color identity because they require colored mana. And that means he has a pretty good grasp of the color identity. Right. Except where hybrids are involved. That's where, yeah. that's where he loses it, but, <laughs> but he is right. It requires colored mana. It does have a color, color identity. identity for commander purposes. Uh, major props to whatever art direction teams were involved with bringing back some heavy hitters of old school magic art. The new Richard Kane Ferguson art is nothing short of magic all. Oh, uh, uh, he says he'll pass along the kind words. Yeah, we got Mark, Mark Tadine, Mark, Mark Tadine, Mark Tadine. Zug. Uh, we got a lot of Ron Spencer, Ron Spencer, a who, lot of big time yeah. old school heavy hitters. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's awesome to see those coming back. Yeah. Magic has this rich history to pull from, and it's very cool when they do pull it from really that history. Is. We really enjoy it and hope you do, too. Hi, Mark. If we ever see a witch's broom, would it be more likely to be an equipment or a vehicle? If you can ride it, and it's not an animal, it's a vehicle as far as I'm concerned. This discussion comes up from time to time. I was very to say... I don't know. It almost feels like an equipment. It'd be almost kind of like the wings, you know, that you can get. I, I don't know. Give it something yeah. flying. I believe it's. A, I believe it's. Uh, <laughs> it's it's a vehicle. It could be either or. I really feel because so. you can ride it. Because you can ride it. Okay. You've talked several times about removing the rules associated with legendary creatures. Hey, we just talked about that. Yeah. Uh, is this something you are personally championing slash rooting for? Well, he's been fighting for it for years. And he's nowhere close to making it happen. Uh, but he does keep working on it. I'm okay with it not happening, I'll be honest. It's just so ingrained now. I don't know. I mean... Right. But we got Mill. <laughs> right. <laughs> and they resisted it for 27 years, and A we got Mill. A long Mil. time. So it could happen. I, I guess I'm on the fence. We've, we've been through so many changes with Legendary that... <sighs> Sure. I mean, if there's no longer... There is a feel bad to draw your second legendary creature in in a, a non-commander format. Right. But I don't play a lot of those, so it doesn't really affect me that much. Well, I mean... In all honesty. If we get rid of the drawback, then what's... Why does it even say legendary on it? Why, why is there a legendary subtype if it's not really a subtype anymore? If it's just another card? To denote story aspects, I suppose. I, I suppose. Uh... May I request lords that pump two creature types? Maybe in the Lorwyn style of creatures and profession. Ah. Like fairies and warlocks have frenzy too, as an example. Right. We have done a few, but yes, we could do more. Right. So that would be interesting to see. Yeah, we, they have done a few. Was it Death Baron or whatever? The bit he does what, skeletons and zombies or something. Uh, yeah. And there's been a few, but yeah, not much. Yeah. Uh, somebody wants birthday trivia about Arixmethes. I hope uh, I'm pronouncing that I right. I think you're pretty pretty close. Arixmethes? Arixmethes, I think is right. Arixmethes, otherwise it's Arixmeth is? I don't even know. <laughs> Arixmethes got designed in Commander 2012 because it was one of the biggest requests for cards players wanted to see in Theros that we didn't make. So that's kind of interesting. Huh. They put it in a Commander because they couldn't. They didn't get it made in Theros. Huh. Very so, interesting. I learned something new. I noticed the amount of questions you answer are much lower than, say, three months ago, and that they are mostly happening around 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. your time. <laughs> Is everything okay? People keep a close watch. He's stalked, basically. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are you okay? You only answer questions. So, I, I knew this answer before I read yeah, it. He's had a few of these questions pop up recently. My personal life has gotten a bit busier. Also, the lack of traveling cuts a lot into my answer time. Not only that, but one of his kids went to college, college right? Yeah. So, mainly he answers so many questions because he's waiting, is what he says. Right. He takes the kids to 
practice, and while he's waiting, he answers questions. Right. While he's waiting in line for, I don't know. When he was traveling somewhere. A glass of water. Uh, yeah. He does it, you know. When he was traveling, if you'd be sitting at the airport, you'd, he'd be on Blogatog the whole time. Yeah. He'd be answering questions. So, at working from home, not traveling as much. So, does WotC continue to track survey results for sets in the years after they are released? If so, I'd be interested to know which sets have aged particularly well or poorly in players' eyes. We do surveys where we ask about planes from sets we did long ago. Yeah, I've seen that on some surveys. Yeah, it's just not tracked near as close as that. It really matters. If you like something when it comes out, get in on a survey, let them know, yep. because that's what's going to affect it. There's going to be much less impact if 20 years from now they're asking you if you liked <laughs> Eldraine, you know, right. rather than right now. Collector boosters and set boosters seem to occupy similar space. What's the main distinction? So I get it. I run a store. I know what the distinction is. Right. Here's what he says. One, the collector booster is for collectors that want an easier time getting the harder to get cards. The other, the set booster, is trying to create the most fun pack opening experience. They are very different. And they are. The collector booster has got a more chance to get foils oh, and to get showcase nice. and full arts and so forth. Right. Whereas the... Uh, the set booster, which we haven't got yet, we get right. into Car Rising. That's trying to make opening the pack just more exciting. There's right. m- more opportunities for something unusual in it. Right. Twenty five percent chance you get something signed uh, right. in that first slot, uh, and so forth. While collector boosters have some more guarantees of what's going to be in your slots. I mean, it still it could be a rare or a mythic or kind of thing, but it's uh, less uh, less unknown the excitement in the set booster i guess because it could be you could get six uncommons or you could get six commons or you know kind of thing in a set booster how's the vision design set design play design and pair diem going quite well so that's what they went to oh it's been a couple years now i guess yeah they they came up with different parts of design <laughs> essentially so, yes yeah it's, it's not just we're designing the set. Now you've got somebody who... Vision design, which is what Mark, Mark, Mark Rosewater does. does. Yeah. And then there's set design, and then there's play design. And that's the people that are trying to balance the power level at play design. Hi, Mark. I hope you're doing well. I'm curious why keywords like ferocious get phased out despite the fact that newer cards like bolt tend... Bolt bend. Bolt bend. Ah, technically have ferocious. Is it because you don't think the effect needs a keyword, or do you want a keyword to appear only on one card out of an entire set? So we don't like using keywords on cards or on a card or two in a set unless it's evergreen. Right. And now we're going to go into the lengthy explanation. (laughs) Regarding key ability words like ferocious being used outside of their sets, I really wish you would start doing this, especially with a very basic mechanic like landfall. I want magic to feel like one holistic game, rather than hundreds of small experiments that we never see again. When ferocious is called ferocious in one set, and called nothing in the next set, it make, just makes it feel like you're forgetting your own mechanics. I know why you do it, but I think it would be better if you didn't. Now, as an enfranchised player, right. which we are, and you probably are if you're watching us, we get it. But now listen to why they don't do right. it. One of the things I enjoy about this blog is that I get to share game design lessons with all of you, but sometimes those game design lessons bleed into life lessons. This is one of those times. A challenge of designing a game like Magic is that they're designing for such a diverse audience. Because we don't have the option of making different versions of the same card, functionally we obviously have things like Booster Fun for aesthetic differences, we have to make decisions about what best serves the audience as a whole. When making these types of decisions, we most often want to prioritize the needs of the audience with the least resources. That's like newer players, yes. okay? In Magic's case, this would be the unenfranchised, okay? Not us. Not us. Unenfranchised. That is players who haven't embraced the game as a lifestyle. They're far less likely to be connected to the larger Magic community, especially on social media and thus have less tools to figure out things that confuse them. I should note that the unenfranchised 
far outnumber the enfranchised. Far. Far. Well, yeah. You know, we get to thinking that we're 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 all it, but right. we're not. There's no. To understand why this is important, let's go down both paths. The current path doesn't keyword things unless the keyword is evergreen or part of the current set. Right. There's some small inconvenience for the enfranchised audience. It's harder to search databases for mechanics. That, That's the part I yeah, hate. That I is. wish in the database it did say it. <laughs> uh-huh. There's an aesthetic disconnection that I'll gladly admit is a little annoying. It might take a second longer to process what a particular card does. Right. Now let's go down the other path. We're constantly making new mechanics, so little by little we're keywording most actions the game can take. If every action that's had a keyword had to take that keyword, when used, over time sets will just have more More and more more keywords. keywords. This tends to cause vocabulary overload with the unenfranchised because they don't necessarily recognize older mechanics that they have had no way of knowing what mechanics matter to the set as every keyword carries equal weight in isolation. Right. It makes sets significantly more complex for them and will cause many of them to leave the game. Yeah. Well, this is too complicated. What does all this mean? mean? So they're constantly battling that. I should note that the above isn't just speculation. In Time Spiral Block, they actually have work on this. Yes. <laughs> we experimented with lots of one of labeled keywords and it went over horribly uh-huh. with the unenfranchised for all the reasons I listed above. They left the game in droves. I remember this. It was a thing. Yes. And yes, the enfranchised, for the most part, really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. The larger lesson here is that when making decisions for the larger group, you want to keep in mind the limitations of those that have the least resources. What might be inconvenience for the audience with the, per- the re- resources can often be overwhelming for those without. This applies not just to game design, but to life as well. Very good, Mark. There you have your life lesson of the day. Another thing that I think about that, which I know it's a minor thing, but by doing that, you actually end up with more words on cards. Because when you have that many keywords, you have to start putting reminder text on all of them. And once you have the keyword and reminder text for it, you have then put more words on the card than you would have just writing out the effect of the card. In some instances, yes. (laughs) All right, moving along. First off, I just want to say I've been loving Jumpstart on MTG Arena. The Arena version of Jumpstart includes Devotion, Escape, Proliferate, and Constellation, one card with each. Is there a difference in approach between reusing key or ability words in Digital Magic and Paper Magic? One of the advantages of Digital Magic is we have a lot more tools to help a confused player. Right. You can lean on the computer to help you learn. Tabletop Magic doesn't have access to those tools. Because there were cards they didn't want in Historic when they made Jumpstart, so they didn't print them in the digital form. That's why there's a difference. Mark, love all the work. You do, I'm assuming. Yeah. (laughs) I think you're a great liaison between the community and R&D. It is my birthday today, and I was wondering, on a scale of 1 to 10, what is the likelihood of Cavus returning? Cavus. I know you gave us one in Dominaria, but I'm more thinking of a bigger return with a stronger tribal support. What colors would you put them in? Red I only green. ask this because I started playing in Invasion. Red, green. Kavus are... Uh, <laughs> they're dominary only creature. Luckily, it's a popular plane, so we should return. Also, one day, maybe we'll find them on another plane. They are primarily red and green. Like, off the top of my head, I can think of maybe a black one or two, some kind of, like, undead Kavu or something, but I can't think of hardly any outside of those colors. Yeah. Uh-huh. Between green and white, which do you think should be better at making many small creatures? Uh, well, that's white. Yeah. White is supposed to do the little guys. Right. White's better at making small token creatures, while green is better at making larger token creatures. There was a time in earlier Magic when green was best at all token making. Yes. <laughs> But we switched over to create more token-making variety. And that's been several years. So you yeah. can you can find old cards that let green make little tokens. But normally, nowadays, when green makes a token, other than saplings, other when they bring them back, it's uh-huh. usually a beast and it's usually a 3-3. Three, three, yeah. Uh, for the most part. And bigger. 4-4s four yeah. and so forth. Uh, where is the effect of cards like Underworld Breach and Yawgmoth's Will in the modern color pie? It feels more like a black effect. So, was Breach just a bend for Theros Beyond Death? 
Blue, black, and red all have some ability to cast cards out of graveyards. Your Grixis colors are all your spell slinging colors when you put them together, yeah. <laughs> now that we have visited some new planes, Amonkhet, Ixalan, Eldrain, Ikoria, and the new ones for next year, is there a possibility for a new plane chase product to come in the near future, maybe two to three years from now? Mero says, I'm getting more requests. So there are people who like the plane There's chase product. There's people that really loved plane chase. I know that they're out there. The casuals who, once again, the less enfranchised players we were talking about, unenfranchised. Unenfran- they they love plane chase. Although if you're on Blogatog, you're enfranchised. No, no, I agree. But I know that a lot of the unenfranchised, they really they dig plane chase. It's fun and wacky. And- Except for the people who get on there and don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Ask for stuff that if they were enfranchised, they know they never get. Right. Might we ever, this was interesting to me, might we ever see a non-creature permanent with the Relentless Rats uh, ability? Mm. Something like an artifact with a tiny effect. It needs to be something where having a large number means something, but yes, it's possible. So that's the Shadowborn Apostle. We got uh, Pestilent Petition. Persistent Persistent Petitioners. And a Uh. couple different rats, right? Yeah. Uh. So, yeah, it could appear on a non-creature. That would be interesting. Hadn't even thought about that. Love to see it now. I don't know exactly what effect we'd get, but that'd be kind of interesting. That would be interesting. Could we have a plane that is both Norse and Celtic-inspired? Well, we already have a Celtic-inspired world, Lorwyn Shadowmoor. Right. I think we could make two distinct worlds rather than blend them. Uh, That said, we made Tarkir. Right. Uh Right. I hate to sound nitpicky, and I have nothing against Samut or Basri as characters, but I'm quite disappointed that both planeswalkers from Amonkhet are human. Especially since it's been shown that Amonkhet is perhaps one of the few planes where all the races there work together and are on equal footing. That's, huh. <laughs> <clears throat> Diversity in characters, especially planeswalkers, is very important to us. While I agree we could have more non-human planeswalkers, I don't believe it should be done at the sake of having less planeswalkers of color. And Basri and Samud are both Both planeswalkers of color. Yeah. So, since you can make Maguses that reference reserve cards, can I ask for a Magus that references Nether Void? (laughs) Or is that a break in modern color pie? Uh, it's out of color pie for black. Right. Also, nobody wants that. <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants Nether Void. No, no, just you. Just, just you. you, and you can probably find a handful of people on the internet that would go, yeah, that sounds fun. Nobody else wants it. <laughs> nobody else wants a Magus that does that. Magus of the Wheel, fun. fun. <laughs> Magus of the Void, Nether Void, not, not fun. fun. Not fun. Not fun. <laughs> anyway, well, Mark, I know you're not the responsible... Uh, not responsible for that, but please pass along the message. The weekly story chapters were incredible and brought many new Vorthos to magic. Even people who were not necessarily Vorthoses were eager to hear about the story and discuss it on forums and LGSs. The way the story has been handled lately is really sad and creates a sense of emptiness. Yes. I just want to say I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. He says he will pass it along. I know it's not his area. Right. The man I miss the story. Uh-huh. It's like the drug dealer that gives you the taste that you always see in the movies, <laughs> and then you come back for more, and then they took it away. Yep. It's It's been rough, because I got into reading the stories right before they stopped doing them. Uh, I read Ixalan and Dominaria, and then like, they stopped really being stories, and uh, it was sad. It's it's crazy. And we might have just about made it in 22 minutes. We got one left. Yeah. Um uh, I don't I don't know where this was from. I really like Chris Mooney's idea during GDS3. Uh that's the great designer, designer search of redoing haunt in such a way that certain creatures care if they are haunted or haunt granting a keyword, etc. Any chance this might actually be something you explore. And he says, Chris definitely has opened up us okay. up to the idea. And that is very cool. Creatures that care, because Haunt was not, I don't even really care for Haunt. But 
creatures that cared about haunting and haunt granting a keyword. Now that we have the keyword counter Counters, thing, yeah, I like that. I don't know. Caring about haunt is okay, but using the keyword counters, those would be pretty cool. Yeah. I can agree to that. I could get behind that. Haunting was just hard to track. Yeah. Creature dies and haunts another creature. It's And then when that creature dies, you get another trigger from it. It it just it was a little a little hard to keep track of. Right. Not with our dry erase tokens though. <laughs> Much easier to keep track Much of. Much easier to keep track of these days. Uh, so anyway, it was a pretty quick week this week. Yeah. Um, but uh, we hope you enjoyed it. We're glad that you joined us. And uh, we will be back with you next week for episode 23. Sounds fantastic. And All until then. flavors next week. And, and until then, just uh, keep on uh, keeping on. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See ya.